Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden, but we're going to head back up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebor, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. And we're going to go back to a brewery that you've seen the review at many, many things from before. And for this one, we're returning to one of my favourite series of beer that this brewery do. For this one then, we are going to go back to OO Brewing, and we're having a look at this month's September 2020 installment of the 5050 series. So this one is the 5050 Motueka Nelson Sovine, so an all New Zealand lineup this month. This one obviously is a New England IPA coming in at 6.5% ABV. So really, really curious to see how this one turns out. Nelson Sovine is a hop that we all know and love, those lovely big kind of white green grapey notes. Very high in alpha acid, surprisingly high at between 14 and 16% normally. Just it's a bit of a beast to be quite honest with you. And and uh, Motueka I know fairly well as well, I know that for being uh, a really lovely kind of juicy and limey hop actually, but it's surprisingly low in alpha acid, usually about 7%. But yeah, my love in New Zealand hops goes back to when I was in New Zealand back in 2015, and you know, there's so many varieties of hops down there, Riwaka, Raka, Motueka, Maltere, um, you know, there, there's so many down there, Pacifica. Pacific Jade, all of these kind of things. There's so, so many hops down in New Zealand and the main reason for that is just that there are no natural competitors for them down there. So the hop industry just kind of thrived and they started experimenting and now they've got a ridiculous number of hops, most of which are named uh, using Maori words, which is pretty cool actually. So um, yeah, if you ever get the chance to go to New Zealand, you're in for a great beer scene. I do hope that I can get back there at some point soon and try a few different things because I know it's evolved quite considerably since I was there back in 20. I'd love to go down there and just, you know, work for a couple of years and come back to Europe and, you know, having tried all these New Zealand beers. But, uh, yeah, definitely cool to have an all-New Zealand lineup this month when it comes to the 5050 series. I always enjoy doing these. As I've said in numerous reviews from the 5050 and the 100 series before, these ones are great because it really does help you kind of educate yourself about the different flavours you can get from individual hops. So I always make sure that I pick up the, uh, the 5050 and the 100 releases. Uh, when OO Brewing do them. There's one of these comes out every month through the Localis Mosca League in, in uh, Sistembolag here in Sweden. As I said, this one was released in September of 2020. The exact date was the first this month. So, um, yeah, very, very curious to see how this one turns out. As I say, a series of beer that I always enjoy reviewing and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So, anyway, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from OO Brewing before. Uh, there will no doubt be more added to that in the fairly near future and if you're watching this in September 2020 I highly recommend that you have a go of the double Narangi, that was a beautifully done beer um, but there's all the usual social media down there as well, if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel, the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in, do check out the playlists of beers from different countries, there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about OO Brewing then on to my brewery notes. So as I've told you before OO Brewing are based in Gothenburg at Jutebori on the west coast of Sweden and the company was founded back in 2011 by Olaf and Ole Andersson who are childhood friends and it's the fact that their names both begin with O that means this brewery is called OO Brewing. But for many years these guys were also avid home brewers, they'd always been interested in beers and producing beers and Ole was apparently heavily involved in the Gothenburg beer scene since pre-drinking age and he was the original head brewer at Stigbjerg's Brewery and this is where the original OO beers were produced. So while Ole manages the brewing side of things, Olaf is in charge of the business side of the brewery but from what I understand he also works in Copenhagen at a marketing agency and does a lot of this remotely but he is in Gothenburg fairly regularly uh, and apparently the whole idea with this brewery is that they just like to make beers that they would enjoy drinking themselves and uh, they do a pretty damn good job at it actually. Um, so in April of 2017, Ole took the decision to, to leave Stieg Berriots and then they invested uh, in a new brewery in Hisingen 
in Gothenburg quite close to the Tingstead Bridge and he invests his time there fully. That is was is one is his one hundred percent um commitment if you like. But at this brewery they've got a two thousand litre brewing system which means they can brew up to five hundred thousand litres of beer per year and in the first year they produced around a hundred thousand litres of beer and they've been planning to kind of expand that up to capacity um over the last couple of years. I'm not sure how the coronavirus has kind of affected them. I think they are still going pretty strong because you know Sweden hasn't had much of a kind of shutdown and things like that. But uh, yeah, a very, very well respected brewery in Sweden these days. OO are you know very well known because of Ole Anderson. And uh, as of September 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 65 different beers according to Untapped. I actually would have thought it would be a bit more than that, but uh, yeah. My favourite beers from this brewery would be the uh, you know the Mussels and the Evergreen. Those were really lovely West Coast IPAs. Of course, you've got the classic Narangi, which is a beautifully done. Uh, New England IPA, one of the four uh, beers that I would consider the cult classic New England IPAs of uh, of Sweden. These guys are very good when it comes to the pills as well. The Ecta pills and the uh, the Pivot pills are both very nicely done. Um, they're very good when it comes to the anniversary Baltic Porter that these guys did was great as well. And the thing is, when this brewery try different styles, they always um, seem to do very, very well with them. So yeah, have a go at them. But the double Narangi that came out also in September 2020, I think that's one of the best IPAs that these guys have done. So I would recommend that you get a hold of that if you can. And I hope that uh, OO consider making that one of their regular beers because it is, uh, it was really, really nicely done actually. It was to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the original Narangi actually. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about OO Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then and see how we get on. So I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork for this one before we open it up. So as you can see this beer um, it's pretty much the same, it's basically colour coded in the same way that all the other ones are. So each each hop basically has different uh, has a different colour to it. I actually can't remember which one um, I think Nelson Sauvine might be the uh, the blue one actually. I think Motueka might have been given the red. But yeah they always do um, the different colours the thing. I'm just trying to say that's is it red or orange. It's a very it's an orangey red I think we can describe this one as. But um, yeah. Uh, the color, they always have the colour coding for these ones. I'm pretty sure the blue was Nelson Sovine, but might have that wrong. But um, yeah, this one, as always, very simple artwork, I guess, from um, from OO Brewing. But um, yeah, looks pretty nice, this one. As you can see, there is the sort of name part of the label, which you'll always find on the side of the cans. This one is a 440 milliliter can. I think I paid the usual sort of 45 crowns for this one. So yeah, uh, about four euros 50. Um, for yeah, just un a bit under four British pounds, and yeah, about maybe about five dollars or something for this can. So um, yeah, pretty good. As I say, you can get some very very good quality beers here in Sweden for pretty cheap prices, I think. But yeah, let's get this guy out, and we'll get on with the tasting. And a six point five percent New England IPA, the OO Brewing fifty fifty series, and this one is the fifty fifty Motueka Nelson Sovian, both hops coming from New Zealand. Let's see how we go with this one then. I have been curious with these beers as to whether they tweak the malt base um, every month for the different hops. I'm really not sure about that, to be quite honest with you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I've never kind of figured that out, to be honest. I think some of them come across as a bit more oaty, some of them come across as a bit more wheaty. So I'd be interested to know what the, the kind of rule is that Ole uses in the brewing for this. As I say, he's one of the ones that I would love to get um, for a kind of Meet the Brewery interview on the channel. So fingers crossed we can make that happen at some point. But um, yeah, with this one, as you can see, and as you would expect from a New England IPA, this one's poured a lovely big kind of hazy yellow colour. If we compare this to the fruit juices, as I always do, this one pours kind of similar to like a mango juice. It's quite a rich yellow colour, just a little tiny hint of orange in it in fairness. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a good degree of haze to this one. Um, it's quite an impressive level of haze actually for a 6.5 percenter, but definitely not the soupiest and gloopiest of uh, New England IPAs that you're going to come across. You can see that this beer has about a one-third finger 
of a frothy. I would say perfect white head on this one. I wouldn't say creamy. I would say perfect white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But overall, it looks pretty nice and it is pretty much what you would expect from a New England IPA. So let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. This is going to be good, I think. Um, oh, yeah. This one comes across. It's pretty damn spicy. Um, yeah, for me... This is interesting, and this was something that I kind of discovered with uh, Nelson Sovine recently. Now, um, for those of you, there will be a mix of brewing knowledges amongst the audience of this video, but for those of you that don't know, um, obviously one of the big, the big thing that can really affect what aromas and flavours and stuff you'll get out of your hops is exactly when you add these hops into the boil. So, um, with, if you add the hops earlier on in the boil, you'll get more bitterness from them you get a higher level of IBU and in this case you'll get more of the kind of floral uh, and kind of you know floral and resinous characters coming out of the hop and um, if you add them later in the boil that usually in the case of IPAs after the in the last within the last half hour after the first hour usually a 90 minute boil for IPAs but um, yeah if you add them within that last half hour that's when you start to get a trade-off for IBUs you know at the number of IBUs you'll get out of the beer the bitterness will go down and you start to get um, you know flavor and aroma coming out of the beers in that case but with this one um, the thing that's really interesting about Nelson Sovine everybody associates Nelson Sovine with that lovely kind of you know white green grapey soft flavor if you like but most but but you know Nelson Sovine has a hell of a spicy character to it if you use this as an early edition hop you'll get a hell of a big spicy character out of this one and you can smell that in this beer straight away Way, you really get that big spicy note from the Nelson Sovine. As I said, Nelson Sovine can be up to 16% alpha acid. It's a monster. It is. Um, a lot of the other New Zealand hops are a little bit less, a bit, you know, quite a bit lower, considerably lower in their uh, alpha acid content. You know, Motueka, like I said, is only about 7% normally. And, you know, the other ones, um, I think the like Riwaka and all this, I remember Riwaka is about 8%. And I think Malteri, Malteri might be a bit higher. Something tells me Malteri is a bit higher. But yeah, Raka, Riwaka, all of these kind of hops are, you know, about, you know, 7-8%, these kind of, you know, that sort of level. But you get a hell of a spite, a big floral spicy note out of this one. For me, this beer isn't resinous, but you've got a lot, that, that floral spicy note that you get out of this one. It's almost kind of similar to Columbus, actually. It really reminds me of Columbus a little bit, this big spicy note that you get out of this beer. But, um, yeah. Um, it's lovely. I really like how this one goes together. Um, yeah, so the malty side of things then, uh, we'll cover that before we go on to the hops quickly, but um, the malty side of things, you do get a good bit of wheat out of this one. There's a good bit of oatiness in there as well. The malt base in this one strikes me as being very, very smooth. Um, yeah, it does strike me as being very, very smooth and slightly more bready than some of the other 50-50s that I remember. Um, I wonder if it is the Narangi base that they use in these beers. Narangi is 6.5%. I wouldn't be surprised if it is uh, quite similar to the, Nar the Narangi base, this one, because it does come across as a bit more bready. Some of the other members of the 50-50 series I've had recently have been a little bit more... Um, they have been a little bit more kind of... They've had a little touch of brown sugar in this one, but I find that the malt base in this one really is kind of white bready. There's a little bit of a stronger wheaty bite to it. Um, but as I say, the, the oats, I think, balance it out quite well. But it might well be that the, the big spiciness from the Nelson Sovine is giving the impression of, uh, you know, a more spicy wheat coming out of this one. I think the spiciness really dominates the aroma, actually, in this one. So that's a really interesting thing to take away. So yeah, there maybe is a wee bit of biscuit coming out of this one, just a little bit of a McVitie's digestive thing. But yeah, oatiness, uh, you know, oatiness. Good bit of wheat, uh, you know, white, uh, you know, good bit of a bit of a kind of more crisp white bready wheat in this one. Then you've got a bit of the, um, the stronger, bitier wheat towards the back of the nose. So yeah, the malty makeup in this one is quite, um, is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, the aroma coming out of this beer, I think, is, um, is really quite nice, actually. So on the fruity side of things, this one, it's got a really interesting combination there. You will notice the lime from uh, the Motueka very early in this one. I love that big juicy lime character it's got. I've always enjoyed Equinot um, as well actually. Motueka and e Equinot are really nice hops in that sense. I do wonder how much of, uh, I do wonder how much kind of spiciness is coming from the um, from the mat from from the Motueka in this one as well. Um, yeah, 
that's it, that's lovely. The big spiciness in this really just stands out. It's got a bit of lighter grassiness as well, but you get some of those lovely white green grapey notes from the Nelson Sovine. Those are kind of sitting there a little bit further back, but really um, it's the lime that I really notice uh, coming out of this one. There's almost a little bit of a kind of gooseberry type ester to this one as well. So this is a really very light and very... Um, it's really quite citrusy, I think. It's very big citrusy and spicy smell in New England IPA, this one. It's actually, it's very nice, very different from the other ones that have been released in this series um, so far. Um, but yeah, I like, I really like how this one goes together. Um, so yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and uh, and see how we go on. I'm very, very curious to see what this one has in store for us. So yeah, this is the September 2020 release of the 5050 series at OO Brewing, the uh, Motueka Nelson Sovine. Let's get stuck into this one. 6.5% New England IPA, lovely hops in this one. Take a bit of time to enjoy that aroma, but let's taste this. Scott. Oh yeah, that is nice. I like this. I usually enjoy this series of beers. It shouldn't be a surprise to you, but I really this one does kind of hit the spot. I mean, the thing that I always noticed with the New Zealand hops when I was down there was that they've got a lovely, quite soft, but also kind of quite oily juiciness to them, and you get that out of this beer straight away. Um, you notice it a bit less if you've got, um, you do notice it a little bit less if you've got one of the American hops in there as well, or one of the Australian hops. There is just something very, very distinctive about the kiwi hops, and it's the fruitiness, I think, that really makes the kiwi hops stand out. I wish that they were used a bit more kind of readily um, up here in Europe, but uh, I think it is just to do with costs and things like that. I think the American hops are cheaper for brewers, and you know, there's not, it's not a debate about which ones are better and things like that. Um, they're all very nice hops within their own right. There's, you know, Slovenia's got great hops these days as well. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 New Zealand hops for me are always they've always got a bit of a special place in my heart. I'll always remember going to New Zealand and trying uh, some of the beers on tap there. It was awesome. That I really want to get back there. But yeah, this one for me. Really, really quite nice. It just, it just, it's a bit nostalgic for me. This one, I have to say, um, but yeah, this is lovely. So, where to start with this beer then? Where to start with it? Um, straight away across the middle of the palate, you get that lovely kind of white bready quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. Towards the back third of the palate, you can feel a little bit of that thicker wheaty note coming out of it. You do get a bit of that kind of wheaty bitiness to the beer, which is really nice. Um, it's, I think this one, is the spiciness, I think, is, is really interesting in this. And it's interesting because I reviewed a West Coast IPA earlier on that had a lot of kind of resinous character in it too, which was interesting. But yeah, the um, the, the fruitiness in this beer and the spiciness it has is it's really quite nice. Mm. So easy to drink. But yeah, on the... Um, so yeah, on the, as I say, with the multi side of things, the back third of your palate is definitely more wheaty and you get a bit more of the bitiness of the wheat as you go further into the aftertaste. As you move further forward into the um, as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue, you can feel it comes across as a little bit lighter and a little bit more crisp, I think, in terms of the white bready character. At the front, um, as you move further towards the kind of front of that middle third of your tongue, you can get a bit of the the kind of oatiness, but I feel, you know, I actually do feel quite a bit of spicy character on that front part of my tongue, which is really, um, it's really quite interesting. But, um, yeah, I mean, it goes together. Um, it, it really goes together quite interesting with that. But, yeah, when you go further into the aftertaste, you can feel there is a little bit of a kind of biscuity, um, you know, McVitie's digestive biscuit-type sweetness out of this one. I really like how that all goes together. But yeah, it's that's it's really it really is quite interesting in that sense. Um, yeah, it's just the spiciness that you get with this. It really does go all over the place. I didn't expect that from it. But yeah, the malt base in this one for me, I do find this one a little bit more kind of crisp and bready. I think a little bit more uh, leaning towards that kind of crisper white bready type quality. There is a wee bit of brown sugar, a wee bit of a biscuitiness that comes out of this one, like I say. But I think having the slightly crisper malt base in this one 
um, really suits the, the hops in this. But yeah, let's move on to that hoppy side of the beer then. So back corners of the palate, I do get a wee bit of earthiness. I think, you know, pretty much all the time you get a little bit of that. Um, the Motueka, from what I understand, I think um, a lot of people say that it's like a... It, I, I think it's actually derived from the Czech hop, actually, if I remember right, is it like a Sats hop? Um, I think it was derived from one of the Sats hops, I'm sure. But yeah, you do, some people describe it as being quite noble. And in fairness, you know, I can see why people would say that. But yeah, as you move further forward from that, um, from that earthiness, you do feel that this beer quite quickly becomes really quite, um, it does become a good little bit kind of floral and spicy. There's a really nice, um, you know, there's a really nice, um, just, the spiciness just lingers there into the aftertaste and it makes the beer feel really quite crisp. But yeah, the, the flavour out of this one comes across really, it's, just, it's nice, I keep repeating myself, but yeah, the big floral spiciness just lingers there and you can feel it really does get quite spicy as you reach the front corners of the palate, but round the very front curve of the tongue, the beer is lovely and light and grassy and that front third of your tongue for me, it always has that oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters come out, The it's, it's just awesome. I really like how it goes together in this one. So if you go right to the back of that, you just feel this lovely white green grapey quality. That's the Nelson Sauvin. Um, and it does become a little bit more gooseberry-like, I think, as you move further forward. But as you reach the almost on the very front kind of tip of the tongue, as you reach almost just that um, front kind of edge, um, that front kind of tip of your tongue, it's got a little bit more of a kind of oily character coming out of it, which is the... Um, the more kind of, I would say, the more sort of limey, um, you do get a bit more of that, that kind of oily, limey character from the um, from the motueka. On the front edge of the tongue, the further you go into the aftertaste, I think it does become a little bit more zesty in the kind of limey qualities. But um, yeah, for me, that it's got a really good blend of fruits in there. But underneath it, to me, I can really get a good bit of spicy character um, coming out of this one. That floral spice almost seems to push into the the middle of the, the the front of the tongue there underneath these fruity sort of things. So I really I really like how that um how that goes together in this one actually. It's um it's really interesting. But yeah, flavour of this beer I have to say is really nicely done. This is probably my favourite one that I've had in the fifty fifty series so far, but a bit of that might be down to a nostalgia factor. Probably a lot of people have different opinions on which one in the fifty fifty series. Was um was the best one, but I mean the ones that they had last month, the Idaho Seven, and I forget was it was I'm sure was it an Enigma one, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was there was, I honestly, was it Nelson Sophie that was in? I really can't remember what the fifty fifty one was last month, but there was a hundred Idaho Seven last month, and that was very good as well. But um yeah, I always enjoy reviewing these beers, and this one's quite nice because it really reveals the kind of spicy side of um of Nelson Sovin and it shows you the nice oily kind of limey notes that you'll get from um, from Motueka in my mind. Yeah, that's lovely that. Big thumbs up to OO Brewing for this one. It's been a very good month for them. Double Narangi in this. Awesome I have to say. Um, yeah, in terms of the um, in terms of the the mouthfeel of this one, then um, again, this is quite. I find this you know to be a kind of middle of the road beer, pretty mid bodied. Carburetion is really smooth in this one. It's got a lovely bit of it's got a lovely balance of wetness and slickness and smoothness in the mouthfeel, and that suits the hops that are in this. I think this one's a little bit higher in terms of uh, IBUs. I want to say this one might be about forty ish IBUs. Could even be a little bit more than that. The Nelson, as I say, the big spiciness of the Nelson Sovin coming out a bit more, it could even be 50 at a push. But I want I want to I maybe put my money I would maybe put my money on 40 IBUs in this one. I maybe would put my money on that. But yeah the malt waste like I say lovely and smooth. I think this one's a little bit crisper and breadier which suits the slightly more spicy aspects to the hops in this beer. And then with the fruitiness it's lovely and soft, you know, white green grapes in there, the gooseberries and then the slightly more oily limey character coming out on the front um uh, tip of the tongue which is uh, which is really nice but yeah big thumbs up to uh, to OO Brewing for this one I really like how this beer how this beer goes together probably my favorite one I think in the the 50 50 series that I've had so far but as you know I'm a huge fan of uh, the New Zealand hops but I highly recommend this series to you in terms of hop education you know these 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 beers are a great learning experience I'd love to see a 100 
Um, I would love to see them do a couple of 100 releases with the um, with the New Zealand hops. I think that would be a really, really interesting one for them. But uh, yeah, as I say, they're lower alpha acid, so maybe the volume of hops would probably have to be a, a bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's And again, with, with it being New Zealand hops, it would be quite expensive to do that. But, you know, these breweries, breweries like OO, um, are well respected and things, so they've probably got good hop contracts and things. I wouldn't think that would be too much of an issue for them, but um, yeah, again, this was another very, very nice example of the 5050 series, probably my favourite so far. So let's leave it at that. Um, so, guys, yeah, highly, highly recommend this beer. The double Narangi as well this month has been great, um, but yeah, check this one out if you get the chance. Um, and check out this series. I think these the, the this fifty fifty series and the one hundred series they do um, are very very good. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from OO Brewing. And um, these guys always do some really interesting stuff. They're not scared to try other to try uh, different styles either, which is great. But uh, yeah, do give me some other brewery recommendations. Let me know who else is doing you know like single and dual hop series and things because I always enjoy these kind of beers where we can focus on uh, one aspect of the ingredients a little bit more. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out OO Brewing from Gothenburg and have a go at these fifty fifty series beers. This one was the 50-50 uh, Motueka Nelson Sovine, 6.5% New England IPA. My favourite one in this series so far, I think, and I highly recommend that you guys check it out. Slanja, school, catch you guys very soon. Cheers.